That's a live look at Washington now. Uh, and we've been seeing these protests across the country tonight, escalating, although peaceful. Joining us now for the other side of this debate, Bernard Carrick, who's a former New York City police commissioner and a former NYPD officer who received the New York City Police Department Medal for Valor. Commissioner, good to see you tonight. And so our last guest saying that they, they, they know it's racism based on a history of alleged racism, including the stop and frisk policy in Manhattan. The stop and frisk policy over the last 20 years reduced violent crime in this city more than 80 percent. It re reduced homicides probably close to 90 percent in most of the African-American communities. Uh, they were the benefactors. The African-American communities in this city were the benefactors of those programs. There was 2,470 homicides in 1990. Last year there were under 500. 2470 down to 500. Less than 500. Oh. And so, but the theory, I guess, is if you're racist, you, you care enough to, to stop black on black crime. You want to stop the homicides, but you don't want to stop racially profiling people. You know what, Megan? Every day a cop gets dispatched to a call, man with a gun, robbery in progress, whatever that call is. That cop don't pick up that microphone and ask what color the victim is on the other end of that call. They go. Mm -hmm. They go. They put their lives on the line for the people of this city and for the mayor and people like the mayor that, that are basically deserting the cops. I feel he's deserting the cops based on what he said earlier. I think it's horrendous. What's, is it dangerous? What's going to happen with that? I mean, what do, you, what do you think the cops are feeling now? You know a lot of them. They're, look, the, the mayor's basically, he almost said that the NYPD is racist. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I, and I, you know, the cops that are out there today, they're following these protesters. The protesters, they're following them all over the city. I think there's going to be incitement based on this rhetoric. It's got to stop. He's got to support the cops. He's got to support the cops. It, there, the position seems to be that, uh, from the protesters, that Michael Brown never would have been targeted for walking in the middle of the street had he been a white woman in her 40s, right? That, that Eric Garner never would have been bothered, despite the fact that he was getting complaints by the local businessmen and so on, if he had been a white man in his 40s offering cigarettes instead of a black man. Here's the reality. Both of, them, both of those men, in my opinion, both of those men would be alive today had they not resisted arrest. And I don't give a damn what color they were. I don't care what color they were. You think if, Mike, if, if Eric Garner, you know, 300 plus pounds, uh, you know, convicted felon, had been white, they would have treated him exactly the same? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why, when he was on the ground, didn't they get him more care? That, that's, that's one of the things that leads people to say they, they just don't care. They don't care about a black man suffering, dying in, right in front of them. Listen, New York cops care about everybody in this city. They take care of people all over the city every day. That's a ridiculous statement. The fact of the matter is they wanted to put him in handcuffs. They wanted to take control of him. Uh, and every cop, and I have to believe these guys felt the same way as I would imagine, right, as I'm talking now, those guys have guns on them. They get overpowered by somebody like a Garner or somebody that takes, overpowers them. They can take that gun and kill them with it. That's always their fear. Last night, uh, we, we were out. Jonathan Hunt was asking people, what does this have to do with race? What, why does it have, have to do with race? And here's an example of some of what he heard. Listen. Well, they're trying to get it. Stand by. Uh, but we're getting it. Uh, the explanation for the, to, to explain that tie has been tenuous at best. And yet, when you look at these protesters out there, Commissioner, they believe it. I mean, and, and whether our last guest explained it the best it could be explained or, or not, they do believe it. Well, it's, I, I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. I was a cop in this city. I was a highly decorated cop in this city. I didn't look at race. I looked at targeting the bad guy, going after the bad guy. But do you, but do you, do you see a bad guy in your mind? I mean, are you more likely to perceive a black man as a bad guy than a white man as a bad guy? That's the essence of the racism charge. You target crime. You target crime. You go to bad, high crime areas, you look for bad. Look at this. This is Chicago now. Things are getting a little rowdy. How, do the how are the police supposed to control this? I mean, people are, sh are shouting in their faces. Most of these police officers are, are men and women who join the force just to protect, well, to protect the communities. And they're getting shouted in their faces as though they're all racist and in some cases getting attacked. 
It's, you know, it's supposed to be peaceful protest. The civil rights leaders that are out there today, they should be curing this. They should be calling for peaceful protest. They're not doing that. They're not doing that. They're inciting, I think. They are calling for it, but out of the other side of their mouths, they're calling the police racists and having mayors talk about centuries of it. Mr. Commissioner, thank you for being here. We're going to be back with more on what's happening here in Chicago right after the break.